Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the monthly jobs numbers report here from Deed. I'm Devin Henry from the communications team. Uh, we've got Commissioner Matt Berlach and the Angelina Nguyen from our Labor Market Information Office here, and I'll turn it over to them shortly. As a reminder, if you need it still, uh, make sure your mics are muted for this call because it is recorded and we will post it later for uh, for note taking purposes if you need it. Uh, I will uh, turn it over now to Commissioner Ver And if you need any uh, technical assistance, uh, Don, uh, Don Andrada, our, um, our teammate here is available if you need that help as well. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Verlock. Yes, thank you, Devin, for not inviting me to provide the technical help because <laughs> I won't be able to offer much. Uh, well, hey, everybody, great to be with you. Uh, thanks, Devin, for the lead in. And thank you all for being with us today to look at the most recent unemployment data for the prior month, September. Uh, so the headline figures are that Minnesota employers added 8,000 jobs in September and that the labor force grew by 1,500 workers. So let's dig in first to the big job growth numbers. Uh, as I mentioned, we gained 8,000 from August to September on a seasonally adjusted basis, which is up 0.3%. And we're excited to note that 0.3% outpaces the U.S. as a whole, given that U.S. total non-farm employment increased by 0.2% versus our 03 uh, Over the month in Minnesota, seven of our 11 super sectors gained jobs, and Angelina will go into more detail on that in just a little bit. And if we look back a little farther, it's also great to see that Minnesota has added jobs in nine out of the last 12 months. Uh, also very pleased to report that the labor force grew in September, and that marks seven months in a row of Minnesota labor force increases. Specifically for the past month, it was uh, 1,516 people, uh, 1,516 joining the labor force, and that's either going right into employment or looking for work. This is great news for Minnesota employers looking for workers and for workers seeking opportunity in our tight labor market. Unemployment rate remains steady at 3.1% in September, and labor force participation rate for Minnesota again held steady as well for the third month in a row at 68.5%. And for comparison, uh, nationally, unemployment is at 3.8 versus our 3.1% and labor force participation nationally held at 62.8 versus our 68.5. Um, as you've heard me and others say before, DEED is very focused on helping more people join or rejoin the labor force in uh, in-demand career fields, and new programs like our just launched Drive for Five initiative will do exactly that. Uh, and with that comment, I will now hand it over to Labor Market Information Office Director Angela Wynn for deeper dive on the details. Over to you, Angelina. Thank you, Commissioner. I am going to jump into the details of the uh, month over month uh, job growth here. So most super sectors in Minnesota gain jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis since last month, and they are education and health services. Uh, they led with 6,000 more jobs, up 1.1%. Second was leisure and hospitality. They gained 2,400 jobs, up 0.9%. Trade, transportation, and utilities gain 1,900 jobs, up 0.4%. Government saw good growth over the month, uh, gain, gaining 1,800 jobs, up 0.4% as well. Manufacturing gained 600 jobs, up 0.2%. Construction gained 200 jobs, up 0.1%. And information gained 200 jobs, up 0.4%. So strong growth in many industries and good growth in others. Um, four of our super sectors uh, saw a decrease in jobs over the month, and they are professional and business services, uh, lost 3,600 jobs, which is a 0.9% decrease. Other services lost 800 jobs, down 0.7%. Financial service activities, financial activities lost 600 jobs, down 0.3%. Mining and logging lost 100 jobs, down 1.6%. Um, but overall, Minnesota gained 8,000 jobs over the month, um, seasonally adjusted. August job growth, so the month prior, um, was revised. Minnesota gained 4,200 jobs. So looking at the longer term, job growth has been consistently positive, and we have recovered all jobs lost um, at the start of the pandemic. Next slide, please. 
Our labor force size grew nicely over the month, marking the seventh month in a row of positive growth, as the commissioner mentioned. Um, we gained 1,516 people in the labor force. Uh, the number of employed increased by 708 workers, and the number of unemployed increased by 808 people. Our labor force participation rate stayed the same as last month at 68.5%, and so did our unemployment rates at 3.1%. Next slide, please. And looking at over the year job growth by super sector. Um, so overall, Minnesota gained almost 50,000 jobs, 49,809 jobs uh, over the year, which is a 1.7% growth rate. Our private sector gained 38,146 jobs, which is a 1.5% growth rate. And most super sectors pos posted positive annual growth in Minnesota. So Minnesota is the dark blue line and compared to the US, the uh, green lines. So in Minnesota, I wanna point out some uh, healthy uh, uh, super sectors. Construction gained 7,322 jobs over the year, which is a 5.1% growth rate compared to the national rates of 2.7%. The strongest growth we saw were in heavy and civil engineering construction, which um, grew 8.3%. Uh, following that, building and equipment contractors, that subsector grew 7.3%, and specialty mm -hmm. trade contractors grew 5.8%. The uh, next super sector growth is trade transportation and utilities. They gained 11,000 uh, 767 jobs, which is a 2.3% growth compared to the nation's 0.5% growth. Um, all subsectors grew, uh, especially transportation, warehousing, and utilities, which grew 6.4%, and retail trade grew 2.2%. Um, we did, however, see uh, a decrease in wholesale trade, which um, decreased by 1.3%. Uh, our information super sector also added jobs over the year, um, up 0.5% compared to um, the national decrease of 2.4%. Leisure and hospitality is now um, in Minnesota is now equal with the nation um, at 4.1% job growth over the year. So we added um, 10,949 jobs for leisure and hospitality in Minnesota. Um, this super sector used to be the fastest growing um, coming out of the pandemic, but has since um, steadied out and is now at a more stable uh, rate of growth. And three super sectors lost jobs over the year in Minnesota, and they are manufacturing. Um, that super sector lost 1,721 jobs, down 0.5%. Uh, the job losses were the biggest in, in non-durable goods, um, especially animal slaughtering and processing, which is down 7.7%, and food manufacturing down 2.7%. Um, the second super sector that lost jobs is financial activities. Um, they lost 4,110 jobs over the year, which is a 2.1% decrease. And uh, losses were across the board um, in every subsector uh, under that super sector. Uh, and lastly, professional and business services lost 9,512 jobs, which is a 2.4% decrease. And the biggest loss was in employment services. Okay, next slide. Average hourly wages for all private sector workers increased 51 cents to $36.14 per hour over the month for Minnesota. And over the year, our average hourly earnings increased $1.15, which is a 3.3% growth rate. Nationally, uh, private sector wages increased 20 cents over the month and grew 4.1% over the year. Comparing that to inflation, um, the CPI inflation index for all urban consumers rose 3.7% over the year for September. So wage growth is um, uh, about uh, in Minnesota about catching up to inflation and uh, for the US has um, beat inflation for September. And that is all I have. Commissioner, back to you. There we go. Um, sounds good. Thank you, Angelina. I see we have one question that we can get to in just a moment. I will um, close by thanking everybody for joining. Uh, and noting again those nice headlines of growth in jobs and labor force. 
Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Angelina. Yes, uh, if anybody has any questions, let's start with the hand raising feature and then maybe we get to a free for all later if we so choose. Uh, Brian Johnson, go ahead. Yes, hi, thank you. I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit more about uh, construction jobs. It sounds like there was a, a modest gain from August to September and a pretty significant year over year gain, 7,000 plus jobs, and that I guess it's a little surprising to me that Minnesota is doing better than the U.S. as a whole in, in that area. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that and what, why you suppose uh, Minnesota is outperforming the U.S. as a whole. Well, I'm going to invite Angelina to take the lead on that, but I will say uh, we have noted that as well, and I um, view that as a, a positive sign and hopefully indicative really of um, other positive news when it comes to investment across a range of sectors where construction is part of the equation. So we're happy to see this and we're tracking it and looking forward to understanding it even better as time goes on. But Angelina, what would you add? Yes, thanks Commissioner. So um, I, I'll speak to what I see in the data. So in the, um, in the um, recent past months when we saw good growth in construction, the growth was heavily focused in heavy and civil engineering construction, um, but now we are we are starting to see growth spread out uh, throughout that super sector. Um, so especially in building equipment contractors and specialty tree contractors, um, there is still growth in like construction of buildings and residential building construction, but they're slower. Um, so most of the growth is happening in like specialty trade and like building equipment. Excellent, thank you. I'll add just anecdotally, I'm hearing positive things about um, construction related to renewable energy, for example, um, and and we're learning about some key new investments from the federal side into uh, our grid. Uh, et cetera. Of course, we had the news recently about the hydrogen hub as well that's going to involve Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, a massive investment, I think a billion dollars. And so that bodes well for driving uh, more progress in that sector. Thanks, Brian. Any other questions from uh, from reporters here? Yeah, Peter, go ahead. Yes, hi. Hey, you mentioned the hydrogen hub. Um, when might we hear more information about the location of that facility? Um, it's been narrowed down to multiple states. The governor suggested yesterday that there was more news to come on that. Yeah, and I got to confess, I'm not the best source on that one, so I wouldn't be able to add anything. Any other questions from folks? Yeah, Emma. Hi there. Um, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about just sort of the the challenges that employers are facing in filling these jobs, particularly in finding people who are have the skills to do them. Um, we see these month over month additions of jobs, but um, a lot of them aren't getting filled. So if you could talk about what the department is doing on that front and also kind of what you're hearing from employers. Well, I can start there. And I mean, this this kind of gets into some of the different functions of uh, the department that uh, I get to help lead here. Um, the Labor Market Information Group reports on the trends. And then, of course, we have significant resources where we're trying to drive positive progress in those trends. And you're absolutely right that the um, challenges of workers trying to find talented employees uh, are significant. And in some ways, it's the central feature of our economy right now. It reflects strength. It reflects the fact that businesses experience strong demand for their goods and services. Uh, and that's great. And it means that a lot of employees have been able to find uh, great career opportunities and to earn rising wages. But there's demand for more. And so we are working to address that. And it's always in collaboration with so many others across the landscape, including higher ed, including the employers themselves, and then connecting them to resources with workers. It's manufacturing month. And so 
I think it was maybe a week ago or so that I did uh, what's called a workforce Wednesday uh, gathering that our workforce team does regularly. We had a panel of, I think, five manufacturers and um, they talked about some of the creative ways that they are working to address this challenge. And so it's things like engaging uh, with high school students and exposing young people to the range of interesting possibilities that exist right in their town, but that might not be obvious as you drive past a nondescript building. But if you get told about it, you realize, wow, there's an amazing opportunity inside. Uh, and then um, if you want to take advantage of that opportunity, uh, you need to learn about what are the um, educational resources that would give you the training to tackle those things. Uh, so partly we are helping to spread the word about how uh, entities are, are tackling this. And then as a result of the historic legislative session, we now have resources on a scale that we have not had before, which we are investing into programs that we know work well uh, and that we can now scale up to an extent. And in some cases, they're newer programs. Just uh, within the last seven days, I don't know if it was this week or, or at the end of last week, we announced our Drive for Five. We launched the Drive for Five. We've been talking about it for a while, but that's one where we're taking a little different approach than we've done before, and that is focusing extra resources on five uh, sectors, broadly defined, where we see strong demand as well as family sustaining wages. And we know that if we can get more people into those fields, we'll have a strong multiplier effect that supports local economies with retail and, and all those kinds of things as well. Uh, and so it's sectoral partnerships. Uh, and then we also have our targeted populations uh, workforce development grant program that'll be coming out later, uh, which is meant to help folks that have faced uh, barriers to accessing great career paths. We focus also on young people, again, trying to uh, expose them to what the great opportunities are and then also uh, provide them skills to take advantage of those opportunities. And I'll note that we do a lot of that work through partnerships with intermediaries, community-based entities that know the lay of the land uh, very well and, and what groups they're trying to work with. And uh, we've seen positive results from those things and now are excited to um, dial it up uh, to a greater level. Thanks. Anybody else? If not, we'll turn it back to Commissioner Berlak to close. Yeah, I don't know that I have too much to add beyond um, what I kind of cited already about the fact that we're pleased to see this steady upward progress. And uh, we will continue to monitor these and look forward to uh, reporting on these trends in the months and years ahead. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.